Hey guys, so have you ever stayed at a Marriott or a Hyatt or a Hilton hotel? Uh, because there is a high likelihood that you've used a prefabricated bathroom pod without even knowing it. We're gonna learn more about the prefabrication process today by going and visiting the SurePods shop down in Orlando, Florida. SurePods is a prefab manufacturer based in here in the US. And so we met up with Bill Siri, who is their vice president, uh, and he walked us through the shop. He told us all the different steps to make a prefab bathroom. So kick back, relax, grab your coffee, and let's go learn something new. I want to paint a really clear picture for you guys, so bear with me because we're gonna go through and we're gonna classify each one of these steps and kind of the sequence that they occur in so you understand how the entire process looks from start to finish. This is gonna give you just a basic order of operations so you understand how it's all gonna come together at the end. Step number one is prep and cutting. Step number two is wall assembly and kitting. Step number three is wall finishing and box assembly. Step number four is quality control and cleaning. And step number five is shipping. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hop in with Bill and he's gonna walk us through how this all works. These are our thin stud roll formers. So this is the beginning of building our pods. So uh, you can see here right now, inch and five eighths studs coming off the machine. We take our full model, turn it into a full, you know, stud profile and track, and then shoot it out and run it right through, right through the stud roll forward. So they're using a just-in-time method of production here. So they don't have all this stuff stored on the shelves, they're rolling it as needed. And this does a couple things. It decreases the amount of inventory that they need to keep on their shelves, so it reduces the amount of storage that they need to have. And beyond that, it also helps reduce the amount of waste that you're producing whenever these things are being cut. So let's say that you're using a 20 foot stick of you know metal stud, you gotta chop that down to length and you probably have two or three feet that you're not even using and you're just chucking, right? So they're not doing that. They're rolling all of this stuff to length based off of their model that they produced earlier on in the process. After the studs have been rolled, we have our table, table assembly right here. So what they're doing now is they're building the wall profiles. So we're gonna build all the walls and then the walls are gonna flow down as panelized walls. But after this, the walls are gonna marry up to the gypsum, which are being cut next. So we'll go look at that. So this is where we cut our gypsum on our CNC robots. So we load the gypsum panels up, standard four by eight panels. You can see this one starting to go here. It's got a full wall profile loaded from our VDC model, which has been exploded out into all the panels and the ceiling assemblies. And now this is running it's cutting all of the holes for that wall in it and it's cutting the wall to size. What's valuable about this is once the model is agreed to with the client, this is gonna cut every unit 100% accurate and repeatable. So no chance of having, you know, blocking that's at the wrong height or an electrical box that's at the wrong height, et cetera, et cetera. So now the wall panels are hung vertically. They're sent down the line where we're doing painting, waterproofing, and skim coat finishing on it. It's a very effective, uh, space effective solution to hang these in a vertical. We've got hundreds of square feet of wall panels all flowing down in a very tight area. We're using the vertical space. Every panel is, uh, is every panel is, is identified by job, bot, pod number, serial number with a barcode scanner so we can scan and identify it later on. So one note here, Bill started to show me the jip that was hanging up on the walls and I noticed something that they had mortise and tenon joints. And so he started walking me through this. This is something that they're able to do with the type of jip that they use for these pods. It's a little bit stronger. And so they're able to intersect these components and make them more rigid. This isn't something that you would ever see in the field, but they need it here because it helps keep the pod more rigid during shipping. This is an oversized CNC where we cut our ceilings and our floors. So monolithic ceiling, monolithic floor. Then as we feed it in here, you can see this is a ceiling line. They're doing it at, at, at workable height, waist height, very safe, able to put all of the MEP connections on the top 
in a very ergonomic environment and then we'll drop this onto the pod a little bit later in the process. These are now the ceilings. They're being hung vertically. They're going down the line so we can apply like a level five finish. And if you look at them, you'll see that we've got all the penetrations. We've got our lights, we've got our sprinkler holes. If the client wants an access panel, uh, everything's, everything's done. HVAC, ventilation is in there. These go down the line and as they're dry, we take them off and then we build the pod room. On the other side of the plant, we're gonna walk over there. They had an entire area set up just for kidding. And what that means is that they're putting together all of these different uh, sinks with the faucets and all the different, you know, pipes coming out of the bottom. They're putting all of this stuff together so that when it's ready to be placed in the pod, they can go grab it off the shelf and put it in place. Sometimes what is done well in construction doesn't need to, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So small pinning of side assemblies is a tried and true construction technique. And that's all we're doing here. Detached off the main production line, we've got vanity assemblies that are drying and pre-done. So as soon as we're ready, we just flip this over and hang it in the box. The whole setup at the front end of the process is all just in preparation for the line, right? So they're cutting and they're they're drilling holes and they're skim coating and they're they're kidding and they're getting all of this stuff together in order to get everything ready for the line where it all comes together. All right, now we're at the point of the process where the box starts coming together, which is really where it gets exciting, right? The walls and the ceilings are now being lifted into place by the gantry and they're being placed on all four sides to create the first steps of the box. Everything's fastened into place on the floor and it's starting to come together. While putting this together, I noticed something that was a little bit slick about the whole ceiling assembly that they're gonna be dropping in. They took the ceiling and they put all of the MEP and everything in it while it was at table height. So it's all prepared down on the floor and then it's lifted into place. So now they don't have to crawl up there with a ladder and have somebody on top of the box finishing everything out. It's already done, they put it in place, they fasten it and they're good to go. The box is now basically complete and the team can come in and start finishing everything out. So one note of the shop makeup here is that the shop is split up into two halves. The first half is the panel side and the second half is the box side. So the panels is where everything's kind of getting assembled and ready to become the box. So there was this nice little transition point after everything got skim coated where everything started getting assembled and boxes started rolling out. It's pretty cool to look at. This is now a completed box. Pod is now on a pallet, it's on rollers and the track is going to roll it all the way down on a controllable production line all the way back. So this is where we convert from a panel facility to a box facility. So we can do the rest of the finish work inside of the box. Now that we've got access to the outside, we can start putting the plumbing and electrical into the outside while the finishes on the inside, such as tile or epoxy floor can happen. So what they're doing right now is they're doing the sloped floor for a healthcare pod. So healthcare pods have a specific requirement to have a sloped floor to a point or a trench drain. So right now these gentlemen are putting in the product to create the exact profile of like a say a 2% slope, uh, three dimensionally down to, in this case, it's a linear trench drain. Healthcare professionals are really excited about this because we can give them a highly controlled repeatable slope across all of their pods. So we're now putting in fixtures and finishes across the whole pod. The wall tiles going up, grab bars, finishes are going on. Again, in a very controlled, repeatable fashion. Again, to provide a little more value to the client, we, the client's asked us to put some waste stack in this. So here's your connections for your hot and cold, but here's some waste stack that again, if we can put some more value in the pod and ship it to the site and help the client out, we're happy to do that. So at this point, the quality control processes can begin and everything's checked twice and they have a checklist. They're going around and looking at everything. They're dialing everything in so tight. And after the QC is done, they're going through with a fine tooth comb and making sure everything is wiped down, everything is clean, everything is pristine and ready to ship. Pods are complete, they've passed the QA QC process. We put a heavy vinyl tarp on the top to prevent any water from tenting or pooling up there. 
and then we do a wrapping process right here. Once this is done, these units are weather tight and they can stay out in our yard till the job's ready to take them. So that's really where we get the value of the speed savings because we're ready to deliver exactly when the job site take, wants to take it. Let's not miss this last part that he just said. He just said this and I don't want you to forget it because this is really important. The pod can be stored outside for as long as you need it. So it's all weather sealed and there's no need for the client to take delivery on the spot, which is awesome. There's a big convenience factor as a result of that. When the client is finally ready to take those pods out on their job site, they can call SurePods and say, hey, send them, and they can start bringing those truckloads of pods in and they can start putting them into place, saving hundreds of hours of labor out on the site. Here in our yard, we've got finished pods. We've got the ability to store about 600 pods. This is the secret sauce, having them ready to be delivered to a job site right as the job site's ready to take them. This is where we typically accelerate projects, anywhere from two to six months, depending on the, the rest of their critical path. But having the pods done, ready, over 100 hours on a construction job site in each of those pods, and it's ready to be delivered in like a 10 to 15 minute pick on the job site. So here are my final thoughts after visiting the SurePods facility down in Orlando. Number one, thank you guys for having me down there. It was a lot of fun to hang out. Number one is productivity. I did not see anybody doing the whole wandering routine. You know, if you go out on a job site and you look around for a second, you see people who are just like, So they're basically in wandering mode. They're not actually doing anything productive. The wandering mode is reduced as a result of being in a facility like this. Productivity is improved dramatically because everybody has the next step in front of them. In a lot of cases too, they're doing the same step over and over and over and over again. So they just get a really decent cadence. They understand what they need to do next. They, they're reaching for the tool uh, just out of habit. So the productivity levels that you're getting from being in a shop like this, is in, it's just insane. The second takeaway that I have is obviously safety. So you look around and everything's, it's at table height. There, there was no reason for you to be up on a ladder really at all. Unless you were doing plumbing or electrical or something on the outside of the pods, there really wasn't a reason for you to be up on a ladder. Everything's right in front of you. Even the use of the gantry, lifting that into place, it's saving people's backs by not having to you know, lift heavy objects all day long. Everything's on rollers, so it's really easy to move around. All in all, it's a very safe environment. My third point is waste reduction. They are not using any more material than what they need. They can reduce the waste by design. Whereas if you go out in the field, things are getting chucked left and right. They're trying to get things done. That's okay. But in this case, especially in bathrooms, that stuff can be pretty expensive, right? In a lot of cases, like the jip that you're buying is a little more expensive than the standard stuff that you might use in a hallway or something, right? So those are just a couple examples of waste reduction that I saw, and I'm sure there are a ton more um, beyond that that I wasn't even paying attention to. And if I had visited two or three more times, I'll probably pick up on. And number four, the finish. The finish is immaculate. Guys, I can't express to you enough how detailed these people were at the end of the line, at the finish line. They were going through seriously with a fine tooth comb and making sure everything is just polished down to the nth degree and, and everything is beautiful. So when that thing arrives on site, it's cleaned. You don't have to have another punch list item. It's ready to go. You could have your guest in that room right then, right there, and they would be happy as larks because it would be beautiful. Well guys, if you have any questions about prefab, make sure that you comment below. Uh, I'll try my best to answer, and if I can't answer it, then I'll phone a friend and we'll see what we can find out together, right? So if you like this, make sure you like and share it and uh, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Catch you later.